Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see something about the engine emissions. By emission, we mean flue gases, exhaust gases, or in other words, alternatively, we can also call them as products of combustion or byproducts of combustion. We all know that combustion of a hydrocarbon fuel takes place inside an IC engine in the presence of oxygen. If the combustion is complete, that is if it is ideal, then all the carbon in the hydrocarbon fuel will be converted into CO2 and all the hydrogen will be converted into H2O that is carbon dioxide and water will be formed because of complete combustion of the hydrocarbon fuel. But practically this does not happen. We don't supply only oxygen for the combustion of fuel. We supply oxygen from the air and along with oxygen a major chunk of air it contains nitrogen as well. So this also takes part in the process of formation of exhaust gases. Now what happens is when the fuel is burnt in presence of air along with hydrocarbons in the fuel there might be certain traces of sulfur, nitrogen, free oxygen and some inorganic elements as well. Air along with its nitrogen and oxygen when it combines with the fuel during the process of combustion gives rise to the formation of carbon dioxide and water primarily and along with it we may also see in the emissions some parts of hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, oxide of sulfur, nitrogen as well as ash. The presence of carbon monoxide it basically indicates that the combustion has been incomplete. These are the basic constituents of combustion. If we further classify hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, oxides of sulfur, they are collectively called as soot particles and when taken along with ash, these four elements they form the PM that is the particulate matter. Then oxides of nitrogen, they are a precursor of the formation of photochemical smog and carbon dioxide as we all very well know, it is a major greenhouse gas. Now let us go on a bit further. The first element or the first component of exhaust gases that we are going to see over here is the carbon monoxide. Basically, it is a gas which is poisonous in nature which will be emitted from the engine's exhaust as we have already seen because of incomplete combustion. Carbon monoxide is a colorless and an odorless gas. As far as the health hazards of carbon monoxide on human body is concerned, when it is inhaled, it will interfere with the proper functioning of the blood wherein it reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. This directly affects organs such as brain, heart and other vital tissues and organs. More specifically, if we see unborn or infant children and aged people, also people with having cardiac complications and asthmatic people are having a very great danger from this pollutant which may result in these people experiencing headaches, fatigue, reduced reflexes and so on. Then another component is the ozone. If we consider of what we know about ozone, we will say that yes, ozone is a good component. It will prevent the harmful ultraviolet radiations of the sun to reach the surface of the earth. However, this ozone is only useful for us to prevent UV radiations from coming to earth when it is in the upper atmosphere forming a cover blanket over the earth but at ground level it is a major component in what we call as smog the combination of smoke and fog if we see further it is not directly emitted into air but it is produced in the atmosphere when combination of oxides of nitrogen and hydrocarbon take place in the presence of sunlight. This ozone, it will react with the tissues of lungs and it will cause a severe health hazard 
in that it causes inflammation and changes or constrictions in the breathing breathing passages of the lungs and thereby it will reduce its working ability as a result of this chest pains might result and also severe bouts of coughing so much so that even healthy people they are found to be quite sensitive when they are exposed to the ozone then also at ground level if we see the smog is different from the ozone layer as we have already stated which is present in the upper atmosphere then another component which is very hazardous to human health is the oxides of sulfur specifically here sulfur dioxide which will be present in the exhaust emissions when there are traces of sulfur present in the fuel which is going undergoing combustion in the ic engines again sulfur dioxide has similar effects as other pollutants in that it will constrict the breathing or air passages in the lungs which will result in severe breathing complications for people suffering from chronic disorders such as asthma and also young children whose breathing capacity or the lungs capacity is less as a result of which they need to work harder when compared to the lungs present in an adult human being then the next component is the nitrogen dioxide and other oxides of nitrogen these are also produced when combustion takes place similar to ozone they are a precursor or a chief element in the formation of photochemical smog again as we have already stated that the effect of nitrogen oxides on the respiratory system is similar as that to what ozone and sulfur dioxide has then we have lead lead is basically added in the fuel in order to reduce knocking in order to increase its self ignition temperature because when the temperature is increased and if lead is present in the fuel this lead will absorb the additional heat thereby protecting the fuel molecules from auto ignition however because of its severe ill effects on human health the quantity of lead has been brought down significantly to negligible levels or we can even say that it is now completely absent in certain fuels because of this there has been a significant drop in direct exposure to lead pollution lead poisoning is so severe that it might cause mental instability and it might also damage blood vessels also it might damage central and autonomous nervous systems it might damage vital organs it can raise to an increase of blood pressure so much so that even if it is ingested in small quantities or if it is inhaled in a very negligible amount it is very harmful because it will start to accumulate in the human body and in the long run it will cause all the aforestated damages then we have particulate matter particulate matter is nothing but very very small particles these particles are microscopic or they might be in the form of tiny, tiny droplets of fuel because of their small size these particles they directly go into the lungs and embed themselves into the deep tissues of the lungs this happens because they are not filtered out by the natural defense mechanisms that are present in the throat and in the nose because of which they might go into the deep tissues of the lungs particulate matter they lead to wheezing that is difficulty in breathing or a whistling sound which emits when a person breathes heavily or exerts more effort to breathe properly and it will cause symptoms which are similar to asthma or sensitive airways it is also a vector for toxic air pollutants such as benzene and formaldehyde which are emitted from automobile emissions and they are known to cause or they are known to be carcinogenic agents also 
they might lead to mutations in the genes and cause congenital birth defects and other severe illnesses in people the chemicals may be inhaled directly or they might be carried by small particles that is dust or lint into the lungs so these were the different emissions or the components of the emissions given out by the combustion of fuel and their severe health effects on the environment and human health thank you very much